Welcome back to the Friday Five for April 19th, 2024. My name is Andrew Ayers. I'm a business law and estate planning attorney with Office of Medina, Minnesota, and coming to you from the New York City office today. Let's look at five questions in about five minutes. Maybe these are questions you've had before and you'd like the answer to. Question number one this week, am I bound by an agreement I didn't sign? This came up in the context of somebody who purchased a business and found once they purchased it, that the business was involved in some contracts that they were not interested in continuing with. And the question was, are you still bound by that agreement, even if you didn't sign it? In this case, what we're dealing with is whether or not those agreements, what we call liabilities in this case, were also purchased as part of the sale of the business, or was the client just purchasing the assets? So what you need to do first is look at the contract that somebody's trying to enforce against you and figure out whether or not it can be assigned. Second, you want to look at your business documents. So when you purchase the business, were you also taking on the liabilities or were you only purchasing the assets of the business? So this is where it's extremely important to understand what's actually in your contract and what you're going to owe money for and what you aren't. The question two this week, is an agreement in an email enough to go to court? In this situation, the prospective client is dealing with an issue with family members. We have some money in a bank account, and we're trying to sort out who owns what part of the money and who owns the other part. There was no actual written contract. It was family members. They were dealing with each other. There was money that had changed hands. But there have been very detailed emails saying, here's what this is, here's what that is, here's what this money is for. We had a death in the family. So in that situation where we have a set of emails, you don't necessarily have a contract, but you do have what we can use as evidence with the court. And so this particular client had filed with the local small claims court. And the main concern was whether or not the emails can be used in court. And generally an email can be used in court, the same as any other document, especially if it's an email sent from the other party. Uh, it's stronger to be enforced against them than just an email you sent where you don't actually have a response. So you can use your emails in court. What we're going to deal with then is the rules of evidence and what the court will allow in as evidence. Question three this week, can I rent out my home without an LLC? This is, of course, a very common question I get uh, working with people who like to rent out their properties and create LLCs to do it. The simple answer is no, you do not have to have an LLC to rent out your property. But there are a lot of different benefits, both on the legal and the tax side and the liability side of things that often make it make sense to create an LLC for your rental property. However, if you don't have the time, you don't have the money or you don't have the inclination to create an LLC for your rental property, you don't actually have to do it. You can rent it out person to person. Question four, what happens to a power of attorney when someone dies? So in this situation, the prospective client had a power of attorney for their wife and their wife had been in the hospital. And unfortunately, the wife passed away. And after the wife passed away, the husband was trying to get access using the power of attorney to some financial accounts only to find that the power of attorney was no longer being honored and that reason is a power of attorney is one of those documents that is only in effect while you are still alive once you pass away that power of attorney will expire and now we move to your estate planning documents and look to your personal representative or your executor as the person who can manage the finances on behalf of the estate so if you're using a power of attorney, keep in mind that it will expire when a person dies. And question five this week, do I need to revise my will if my personal representative dies? So this is going to be one of those classic lawyer answers, and it's going to depend upon what your will says. If you only have one person nominated as a personal representative, then when that person dies, you will want to update your will because we want to make sure that there's somebody appointed who's still alive, who the court could then appoint as the personal representative or the executor. However, many people in their wills will have an initial person and then one, two, maybe three alternates. And if that's the case and your two or three alternates are all alive and healthy, then you don't necessarily have to update your will when your personal representative dies. However, it may be a good idea at some point to do it. And you don't have to redo the entire will. You can do what we call a codicil, which is a legal term for an amendment to your will. And you can just update the order of your personal representatives. 
So that's it. Those are our five quick questions for the week. If you like this video, you can hit the like or, uh, or thumbs up button below. You can subscribe to future episodes on YouTube. You can go to airslawtv.com if you're taken to YouTube and you can submit a, at, you can submit a question at the link below. And you can always go to andrewmairs.com for a legal strategy session. I'm spending the weekend in New York City and hopefully wherever you are, you have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next week.